while your left hand reads these rhythms. And I, I think I have what I need, and I'm over it. So um, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. Oh, man. Just talking my face off. I hope people understand this. What is up, people? So today's lesson is about coordination and independence. Um, I always encourage you all to email me or direct message me on Instagram or put in the comments questions on what you have. And this week I got from Matthew, I got a direct message on Instagram that was asking about, hey, Tim, what, what exercises do you have for coordination? And I, I thought that I had had I had something on my website or, or that I had posted somewhere on the internet about how to work on coordination that you all can get for free, and I haven't, which is insane. So I immediately was like, I have to film a YouTube video. This is for you all that want to know coordination and independence. Um, it's something that a lot of people think about talk about, have a bunch of different exercises for, and I'm a big fan of systems, okay? Um, I, I think that exercises are great, but I think that learning this exercise and this exercise and this exercise gets really daunting, um, gets really exhausting, and for me, if I have a system in place, no matter what I want to learn, what I want to improve on, I can put it into the system and get more out of it without having to learn a bunch of random exercises. So, um, Many of you are familiar with Ted Reed's syncopation, um, and many of you will be familiar with it because a lot of people, when they're learning jazz, use Ted Reed's syncopation to work on their jazz independence. But it doesn't just have to be jazz. You can use Ted Reed's syncopation for any number of coordination expanding exercises. Coordination is simply being able to do multiple things at the same time. And I think where so many people um, struggle with coordination and independence is that even though we know a bunch of drum grooves, a bunch of drum fills, uh, we know how to play swing and all this stuff, we don't actually have pure control over what's going on and we don't have coordination because what we're playing relies heavily on the context in which we're playing it. The first example I'm going to show you is just uh, and download the PDF. The PDF is down in the description. You can download it there uh, so you can read along and reference what I'm talking about because the first line is an excerpt from page 38 of uh, Ted Reed's Syncopation. Uh, that whole exercise is called Exercise 1, and it's the first line. It's four measures of... Um, you'll see uh, on the where the kick drum would usually be, it's just marking where the quarter note is. And then up above, there's a bunch of eighth notes and quarter notes that are giving you a random rhythm. And that rhythm, played very simply, I'll keep quarter notes on the hi-hat and then play the rhythm, that rhythm sounds like this. So that's the first four measures of Ted Reed's syncopation on page 38. Now, we have a bunch of random quarter notes and eighth notes. So, so far, with us keeping time on the hi-hat and just playing those simply on the snare drum, all we're doing really is working on our reading. That's not terribly taxing from a coordination standpoint. So we need to find ways where we can use these random rhythms, because remember, there's a whole page of this. I'm simply just talking about what we're doing with the first four measures, but you're gonna read through this entire excerpt. Uh, you're gonna get modern reading and you're gonna read through each page, different eighth note triplets and 16th note triplets. It gets infinitely more complicated, but I'm just giving you a system where you can take a bunch of random rhythms and work on your coordination. So. The first exercise we're going to do is we're going to play simple eighth note hi-hat, snare drum on two and four, 
and we're going to take this rhythm in Ted Reed's syncopation and we're going to play that on our kick drum, okay? So the hi-hat is going to be just eighth notes on the hi-hat, snare drum on two and four, and then we're gonna take the rhythm in Ted Reed's syncopation and read through with our kick drum. What that'll sound like is this. If you're playing eighth notes on hi-hat, snare drum, and two and four, reading through these exercises is going to start to give you a ton of freedom of when and how you play your kick drum. So that's the first level. You can just take your hands, play simple time, read through with your kick drum, and now you're working on your coordination. You're not learning one groove at a time. You're learning how to play what you want on kick drum when you want to play it. So. The next, the third line down, what we're going to do now is we're going to assign an ostinato to the snare drum, kick drum, and stepped hi-hat, and we're going to read through these rhythms on the ride cymbal. So our snare drum is still going to be on two and four, our kick drum is going to be on one, two, three, and four, hi-hat is going to be on two and four, and then we're going to take this rhythm written in Ted Reed syncopation and apply it to reading through with our right hand. So that will sound like this. Now we're starting to see that the right hand is going to want to line up with the snare drum always. The right hand is going to want to line up with the kick drum always. And we're going to have to, now we're breaking habits. Now we're really forcing ourselves to gain coordination because we can't always have our hands hit together. When we're reading through these rhythms, the right hand has to be independent of the snare drum, independent of all these other things. So the next thing we're going to do is you can even apply this to your left hand. We're gonna play hi-hat, all eighth notes with the right hand, kick drum, one, two, three, four, so four on the floor, snare drum, two and four, and we're going to read through this Ted Reed syncopation, these four measures we're gonna read through with our ghost notes, okay? So that would sound like this. Very cool. Now we're starting to gain independence with our left hand. Our left hand playing ghost notes is now relying less and less on what the hi-hat is doing, filling in the gaps that we're used to because of the grooves we know. It's just playing ghost notes when all these rhythms appear. And that is going to yield us more and more coordination, more independence, more the limbs thinking on their own and not having to take their cues from our other limbs. So the final exercise that I have for you is again, we're taking these four measures, the same rhythm, we're taking that rhythm and we're going to apply it. This is where it gets a little complicated. Take those eighth notes and quarter notes and anytime you see an eighth note or smaller, 
the subdivision eighth note or smaller, which I think eighth note in this exercise one, page 38 of Ted Reed's syncopation, I think eighth note is the smallest subdivision. Anytime you see an eighth note or a smaller subdivision than that, you play it on the snare drum. And anytime you have a quarter note or more, so a quarter note, dotted quarter note, half note, anything quarter note and larger as a subdivision, you're going to play on the kick drum. Now something interesting is happening. Now it's becoming a little more of a reading exercise, but also a coordination exercise because it takes a lot of independence to be able to be playing something and separating what is going to be snare drum, what is going to be kick drum, okay? So the hand pattern I have for this video, and this is the mo easily the most complicated exercise on the sheet. So again, download the sheet music in the description, but this will be a great independence exercise but it is hard, so work your way. If you haven't mastered the first four exercises I've talked about, don't attempt this last one, because it's going to be complicated. But with the right hand, you're going to be playing the figure one E and, two E and, three E and, on the ride symbol. One E is going to be on the ride, and then the ands are going to be on the bell of the ride. One E and, two E and. Hi-hat is going to be playing on the off beats, on the and of every note, one and, two and three and four and one e and two e and and then snare drum and kick drum are going to be dividing these notes again anything that's eighth note or smaller as a subdivision in this on this page of music is going to be snare drum and anything quarter note or larger is going to be kick drum this is what that would sound like Once you've mastered that, you now have another, let's see. Once you've played that line, you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You have nine more lines to learn before you can play that page, right? That is a ton of, that is why this is so beautiful. This one page of music, these 10 lines, these 40 measures on this one page out of this one book, can give you all of these exercises. You know, you could spend the next year working through this one page of Ted Reed's syncopation with these f four or five variations of how to interpret the rhythm and how to assign it and work on your coordination. So, I hope this has helped. This had, I learned this way via jazz at first, but it is applicable to any kind of music, any genre, any coordination you want to improve on. This book will help you, and again, Modern Reading Text by Louis Belson, I think, is also a very worthwhile investment because um, Ted Reed's syncopation sticks to mostly eighth notes and sixteenth notes, and um, the Modern Reading Text gets into triplets, sixteenth notes, eighth notes, all of that stuff. It's great. Um, I think you guys are going to get a lot out of this. Email me with any questions, timbulemusic at gmail, um, and I'm here to help, so please, seriously, use that email or hit the comments right now. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you haven't already. And um, let me know what other lessons you all want to see. And I will see you next time.